What's going on everyone? It's Jeremy with JMED's Brick Clicks. We're starting off here on the side of the farm because I'm going to make a new mills plate and let me bring you over the trees. You see our garden here is taking up a lot of space and I do love my garden. I love my custom windmill. I love all my little custom sunflowers and plants and my grapevines. But one thing I would like is to have a little bit bigger field for my planting, for my corn. And to do that, I've got a mills plate here where you can see right where the clear line is with the green and the dark tan. And the other part of that plate, actually it, it covers, includes the driveway, includes the cattle guard there, and actually includes that row of fencing just a few bricks in. So I need to change this out. I need to mimic one that includes another driveway, but then just have all this just as open space so I can actually add more planting rows. And this is a temporary thing just so I can change it out here and there. It'll be back for the summer. And yeah, that's what I'm working on for my new project to maybe expand the fields a little bit. So let me show you what we got. So to start with, we got to start with a blank canvas, which involved me buying another one of these 48 by 48 gray base plates. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how I'm going to make this driveway. I've got a few more pieces coming in the mail, mostly these 16 by 16 dark grays. We'll put some bricks down. We'll connect those right on the corners and yeah we need six of them to take up this much space like that and then here's our road just in case you want to know so what i'll do is i'll have to put some a uh, row of brick or a row of plates then a row of tiles on top of that and then i can just sit this piece of the driveway right on there like that and you can see how much overhang. This is all green space over here. We've got a ramp that'll go there. And then this weird thing, which all it is is those pieces, like the sliders or whatever. Back in the 80s, you used to use them for sliding doors, which they stopped making those sliding doors. I use those pieces for guttering for when I build houses. But when you build them like this, you stick it right there. It actually works great as a cattle guard. So that's how you build that. So I just need to put a couple plates, or a row of plates and a row of tiles for this one. And then it'll line up perfect, just like this one will. Let me push this down. Yeah, then we're flat going across that. And that'll just raise that up with a row of plates and tiles. And then we'll have all this area for field, which I can then, if I want to add my corn to it, I can. Or I can just do the tie or the bricks, which rows of brown bricks, just to show the, the rows been cultivated. And then I need to fix all this, the green space, to match that over there where my sheep are. Okay, just for a follow-up, yeah, there's that that we're rebuilding. And then you can see we got to do that row of fence and some green space. I'm not sure if that tree's right on the line or not. It might be. But, yeah, we'll have to pull this piece out. And to take this out, all I have to do, i got to take the house out, which it's on one 48 by 48, and then that one. Just slide them back, just like a sliding puzzle. Slide them back to where I can reach it, since my mountain's right here. And yeah, slide that new one in. That one will just go into storage for a few months, probably through the winter, in real life winter here in Missouri. Through the winter, we'll bring it back in the spring. Also might do a, somebody's asking me to do a grape harvester machine, which I've never seen really in my, in my life before or done. So having my grapevines there, which I like this design better than anything I've ever seen on the internet, my own custom design. Um, 
having those there, I'll be able to at least have a, to where I can figure out spacing if I'm going to make this machine or not. So here's another view. All right, let's get started on this little project. That way, yeah, I can get this thing switched over before the corn planter there, or the, yeah, our 8RX and our planter make it down through here. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. If I just want to add brown plates just to make it look like that, I can do that like through this whole area before we start switching over to the corn. And again, if, if you're new and haven't seen the corn that I've shown in a bunch of videos, here it is. So we got the rows on the bottom and then the candlesticks. And yeah, that's my corn. So we've got all this corn ready to go to be put in the field at some point. And then later on, once we get closer to Thanksgiving, I take out certain rows and we make a corn maze. I do this, I've done this the last two years, so this will be the third year that I'll do a corn maze. Another reason to maybe get a little bit bigger cornfield, because I can make a little bit bigger corn maze. All right, here's a quick progress thing as I'm taking out the buildings. So I've got the house out, had to take all the trees out, and really, man, without the trees, which are just randomly placed because it makes no sense but without the trees it just looks so bare down through there when you take out i had four trees yeah it doesn't look that great but anyway to be able to move this i just gotta move some little sheep and this should slide back other than that one piece of fence which is now stressed so all we need to do Pop that piece of fence off. And now, this will slide back, in theory, <laughs> just like a puzzle piece. And I know I can't do this two handed, so I gotta pop this out, and then we'll pop the new one in without all of that. Which, yeah, it's gonna hurt because I love my windmill, and I love my $20 spruce tree. I might put that back in the city or back somewhere in the farm because it cost enough. But I got to build this little green area here. That way it matches up with the driveway. But the rest of it's just going to be open. And then we'll get some more planning stuff done once I get some more pieces in the mail. I got this new field put in. But one thing I wanted to go over was my little bird nest. Added that in to go with our cardinals and bluebirds. All right. Look at how much bigger that field looks when I took out the, the garden, which really it's only six of those 32, or six of the 16 by 16 base plates. Base plates, just regular plates. So that's really all we added. I did a little strip of green on the side just to really have something to where the field isn't right up against the, the paved driveway. We've got our front yard here with our little temporary fence. Yeah, it's not the greatest, but as much as I change this thing out, I just wanted something that I can easily change out. Same thing over here with the goats. We added the fence up to it, and we've got the temp fence right there going through. And we got our tractor that's working on planning. Now, two things with this, the way this field's set up, other than just right there with the, the planting rows, the way I've got this set, this is also how I've, it's gonna be really easy to transition after planting season and after I have all the corn fields to a winter setting where I've got kind of like this dead grass idea or dormant grass look to it so I can put in stuff in the past I've done the reindeer farm I've done the Christmas tree farm and I think this past year was the very first year I used that Chris or the winter the Chinese New Year set that's got the um, skating rink on it I just plopped it down in the middle of the field and put a bunch of my trees around it so that's another quick idea just to change this farm up in the winter because there's not a lot that goes on. 
especially for planting season. And then, I mean, yeah, I could put horses or the cattle back in there, but anyway, let's take a look at that. This is the set that I'm talking about. So we'll move the outhouse. Yeah, it's kind of on its own little plate system. And I can just fit it right inside the field. I can put the outhouse, which is the coolest part to this set. I can put that somewhere, and then all my custom trees, the winter trees, yeah, they just fit right in the farm kind of as a backdrop. And you kind of get that look just on the farm. So it gives me something to put in the fields. And we got the one guy ice fishing. So yeah, that's the other idea um, to have that dark tan in the fields. So I could just put this down and then maybe just add around it and add some Everybody's got a ton of Christmas trees, the brick built kind. Like every single one of the winter village sets comes with a tree, so you got all these too. Anyway, I think this is how the farm's going to be for a little bit. We've got enough of the plates right here to hopefully do this entire field, so that'll be the next update. I got a bunch of these and a whole lot more than what I can hold in one hand. These 1x12s to hopefully do that entire dark tan area. We'll see. I think I've got enough if the math is right, but <laughs> Lego math sometimes doesn't add up even though you know you've done it right. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. So that'll be probably the next farm update. Getting that and then the uh, custom planner right there. Getting it out in the field so we can... Make it look like we're spraying some herbicide or something. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Check out my other farm videos or any other videos dealing with the Lego City. And we'll see you in the next one.